All right, so um, to create modulated surfaces in Rhino, we're often working with landform, uh, topography, bathymetric profiles, which are contours underwater, and other um, soil moving and planting forms that kind of take on shapes on the land. So a lot of what we do in landscape is surface modeling of topography, and it's really important that we know a few different methods for how that can be done. So in this uh, little exercise, it says curve Boolean to get closed polylines, elevate the contours and patch from curves. But let's just take a look at what this is saying right here. I have a few grades on, and these are meant to assist you in elevating these contours. So this level here is meant to be the base point, the sort of zero point. It may not actually be zero according to its height on Earth, but according to this particular part of the model, uh, we, I've set it as the zero point. And then we have a few high points and low points around the site. So if we look over to the corner over here, we have a low point of minus 1.5. And let's assume that this is in meters. We have a minus 1 over here, minus 0.75. Then we have a raised up mound of 0.5 and 0.75 up here. So what this tells us is that we have um, a relatively level um, spot here in the middle. And then we're going up to this land, minor landform here. We have another minor landform over here. And then we have some depressions in the landscape in this corner, this corner, and this corner. So let's move into our perspective view and take a look at this in uh, perspective. So currently all of these contours are flat and it's up to you to elevate them to their right height. If you've watched my Rhino for Landscape Architects tutorial, you'll know exactly how to do this. And if you also followed the, the topographical modeling uh, workflow in week three and four, then this also will be familiar to you. Essentially what we want to do is identify all of the contours that need to be elevated or lowered and then um, use the move in the vertical direction tool to help us raise them up. So even though this says curve Boolean to get closed polylines, I'm going to suggest that you actually duplicate this and make a couple tests. So I'm going to just um, duplicate this up by pressing alt on my gumball up here and what I want us to do is I want to make two tests. One is I'm just going to raise these contours the way that they are or lower them the way that they are. And the other thing I'm, I'm going to try is um, taking on this curve Boolean to get closed polylines within all of these different shapes. And let's just see what happens with both of these methods. All right. So um, if we know that this central part is zero, we know that we're not going to touch these two contour lines. Um, so our next point of um, lowering <clears throat> is going to be this contour line here. So I'm going to just do it in this model above. And everything that needs to be lowered, we can select all at once. So everything that's going to be going down in the Z direction, let's select everything and move it all at once. So I'm going to select all of the contours that are going to form depressions, and I'm going to use M for move. Select. Uh, vertical up here or press V for vertical on your keyboard. Then you're going to select a point to start from and I'm just going to select the end point of one of the contours and I'm going to move it in the minus 0.25 direction. It's minus 0.25 because if I count the number of contours between the, uh, the base point and the low point, if this is zero, this must be, this level must be 0 0.25, 0 0.5, minus 0.75, minus 1, minus 1.25, and minus 1.5. So you're going to have to use the contours and try to figure out what heights you need to lift each contour. Each contour usually represents one meter in um, a topographical model, but uh, the, in some cases where we have micro topography, we might use smaller increments like 0.5 or 0.25 of a meter. So in this case, I've lowered all of those lines down by 0.25 as the first lowering. Now I'm going to deselect the curves that are gonna stay at that level. And so only the other curves are um, selected. And I'm gonna move those down again. So move, enter, vertical, select a point, minus 0.25 is our next increment. And then I can deselect 
the next set of contours from this selection so that uh, they stay in their place and we continue moving the rest of the contours down. Move, vertical, select a point, minus 0.25, oops, 25. Deselect, deselect, move, enter, vertical, select a point, minus 0.25, deselect. Our final contour, move, enter, vertical, select a point, minus 0.25, enter. So if we look at this um, shape in our, uh, our one of our orthogonal views, you can see that all of the contours have been lowered by their increments appropriately. So now we see um, where these contours are meant to be in space. But we also have the, um, the heightened contours. So we have these uh, landforms here that are moving up into space. This one is going to be plus 0.75. This one is going to be 0.5. Um, so we want to um, raise these up. So I'm going to do M for move. Vertical, select any point and then raise it up by 0.25. Deselect the bottom contour, and then repeat the process until all the contours have been lifted. M, V, point, 0.25, deselect. So now those contours have been raised up, um, and Normally what we would do is use the patch command to create a surface from all of these input curves. So let's see if that works. I'm going to select all of these contours and um, let's just hit the patch command and see what happens. So um, the default settings I believe are 10, 10, and one. Um, yours might be a little bit different, but let's just see what happens with these default settings. And I'm gonna hit preview to see what happens. And the only thing that happens is this little um, patch over here is created with one of the closed poly surfaces. So that's not any good, so let's cancel that. Let's uh, add this outer profile edge to our selection by hitting shift and clicking on it. And now let's run patch again. And I'm just gonna put mine back down to the default settings and hit preview and see what happens. So if I look at this in our, my perspective view, you can see that Rhino is trying to um, interpolate all of these curves to create a modulated topography, but it's not very, um, it doesn't look super accurate. So let's see if we can adjust this so that it's a little bit more accurate. I'm going to increase the spans. The spans are these black lines that you see creating a grid across the surface. Those are called the ISO curves, but you can increase them or decrease them, and that will basically make them um, more pliable to the input curves. So I'm going to keep the stiffness at one and hit preview and see what happens. Now you can see that the surface has tightened up a lot, so we now have uh, 25 of these grid points and that means there's more control points kind of creating this curve and they're beginning to hit the edges um, and the topography conditions a little bit more accurately at least in the middle part of this topography but the edges are really um, weird looking so if we go to the top view and let's just hit ok to accept this we have a lot of these like kind of wavy edges around the side and kind of making it look like it's a bit stepped in places. Let's try another way to create this topography. So let's move down to this one and I'm going to turn off my notes again just so I don't, um, they don't interfere with my curve creation. So it's said to use curve boolean to create closed polylines, then elevate those and then create a patch from contours. So what I'm going to do is um, put in the curve boolean command, select all of my curves as inputs and press enter. And then I'm going to check that combine regions is set to no because I want to create different um, curve boolean 
outlines for each of these specific areas instead of combining them all into one area. So I'm going to hit these different sections um, as I go along and Rhino is going to create closed polylines within all of those sections for me to use. Once I'm done, I hit enter, and now I have a family of closed polylines that I can use. What I'm gonna do is just put those on a layer called curve boolean, just so that I can easily select them. So I'm gonna turn off my, um, my base points and my contours, and what I'm left with are my curve booleans only, so that I don't have multiple lines that I'm dealing with as I select. And I'm going to elevate these to the points that are noted here. So again, um, I will take this profile, these profiles that are all going down, everything that's gonna be uh, moved vertically in the negative Z direction, I have selected and I'm gonna use move, vertical, select a point and move it down by minus 0.25. I'm going to deselect the level of minus 0.25, and then I'm going to keep reducing these down. All right, so now we have kind of what looks like a stepped surface going down into the different directions. This is a little bit easier to visualize than the other um, contour drawing that we had without the closed polylines. Now let's elevate these other landforms up to their proper heights. Okay, so it should be pretty easy to visualize how this is going to look now that we've elevated all of these contours. Um, but let's turn off our notes and then let's select all of these inputs and try that patch command again. So if we do a preview here, you can see that it, um, it kind of extends this surface beyond the scope of what we have uh, outlined here. And that's because we don't have a unifying closed outline of um, the site in this selection. So if I press cancel and I turn back on the basic lines and points, and then I select this outside input curve as well and do patch again and preview, you can see it keeps it closed to that border that we have selected. So um, that's just something to keep a note of while you're using the patch command is if you don't have an outside border selected, it will kind of create a flowing sheet that moves beyond. But actually sometimes that is what we want. So I'm gonna hit cancel again, deselect that outside edge and hit patch again. I'm just typing it in. Let's do a preview. Because what I like about this is that it doesn't try to curl up the edges to the perimeter like it does in this other one. Let's just try a few other options here. Let's try a stiffness of three and see what that does. So that makes the whole thing a little bit more uh, stiff, if you will. If we increase this to 10, you would see that even more. You can see how it's almost like this is a piece of paper and it's increasing to be like a piece of cardboard or something that you're trying to fit in between these contours. If you give it a stiffness of one, it's the most pliable, let's say, the most readily accepting of the input curves and the most true to the heights and depths of what you have set. If you increase the stiffness, you're going to get a much looser interpretation of these curve inputs. So this is just uh, to kind of show you how these different settings impact what you're creating. You may need to change these settings depending on the scale at which you're working, the size of your site, or um, the height of your curves. So just be aware that this is how you can control um, this type of operation. And I'm gonna increase the spans to 50 and just see what that does. So if we increase the spans to 50, even though the stiffness is 10, you can see that it does conform to the, the input curves even more. So you can really take um, control over what you're producing by knowing how to adjust these settings. I'm gonna turn the stiffness down to five and see what that does. Now we have an even more conformed surface. 
and at 1, it is really, really conformed. So in, in um, to almost to an extent that it's too conformed in that it, it's creating these like micro topographies in between the contour lines that are kind of undesirable. So I'm going to keep this to 5. That seems to be like a pretty good uh, sweet spot between um, hitting all of the contours and shaping this site uh, without creating um, undesirable micro topographies. And I'm going to go OK. And now you see we are left with a fairly smooth topographical surface. It is conforming well to the contours. And we can use this outer perimeter line to just trim away the rest of this surface. So if we go to our top view, and we have this outer perimeter uh, selected and use the TR command for trim. It's gonna say select object to trim. I'm just gonna hit this surface and Rhino automatically gets rid of that surface. Press enter to end the command. And now we have a really nice uh, topographical base for our model.